initiated the divorce sure. and legal documents. Uh, she initiated the divorce sure. and legal documents. Uh, I, I think she's entitled to nothing during this. Just as a quick thing, whoever, okay. Oh, these trigger me. Okay. There's like several layers to how dumb this comment was, okay? She initiated the divorce sure. and legal documents. Uh, Anybody can initiate a divorce, regardless. Even if one side wants to begin divorce proceedings, the other side could initiate it. Initiating is just when you're filling out the paperwork, it's who the petitioner is and who the respondent is. It doesn't matter. A divorce is always going to have the same two parties involved, husband and wife. It doesn't matter who the, who the petitioner is. It doesn't matter who initiates it. It's not, it doesn't matter, okay? Number one. Number two, just because somebody wants to do the divorce doesn't even necessarily mean it's their fault. Um, I like how people will go to like, oh, well, whoever initiated the divorce is the one who wants the divorce or the one who caused the divorce. Like, that's a really reductive way to look at things, right? <clears throat> Let's say that I have a wife and I start sh myself all day because I'm bored and I start throwing it all over the apartment because why the f not? And then my wife divorces me, right? Is that, is that her initiating divorce because she just wants to leave the marriage and she's abandoning her husband and abandoning the sanctity of marriage? Or is it my fault for spraying shit over it? Like, it's such a weirdly reductive way to view relationships. I don't understand this, like, well, who initiated blah, blah, blah. Like, relationships take two people. I, I think she's entitled to nothing during these proceedings. And I think the problem is no fault divorce. And I think the, we're not dealing with a traditional at fault divorce. We're dealing with uh, irreconcilable differences. And I think the real answer should have been that when problems arose, a judge told them both, STFU, you are in a marriage. It is a sacred covenant. You Bro, you're giving me financial benefits and there are financial things relating to this? No, f*** you. A judge isn't going to tell me to stay in a relationship or not. What the f***? Why the f*** would you ever want the, the, the state involved in forcing you to date somebody or be together with somebody that you don't want to be with? What, like, how is this a good idea? Like, you are in a marriage. It is a sacred covenant. You will not do X, Y, and Z. The problem I have with this is marriage has become dating. It's, it's, it's dating, dating with like um, uh, strings attached in, in the financial world after the fact. No, 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 no. Don't get married if you don't want to get married, okay? If you, if, and if, if you don't want to get into a position where you have to file for a divorce and hire lawyers for these reasons, then don't get married right. at all. And so the issue is not so much like in, in this argument I'm making, it's not to do with Hillary uh, uh, or Steven. Well, Spitmeister, thanks for the five-year subs. True. Just don't start a relationship forever if you don't know it's going to last forever. I mean, how do you know that going into it? I doubt either of the Crowders thought they were going to get divorced. Specifically, it's about the fact that we live in this world where people get married and then go, you know what? It was a mistake. Let's sever ties. You pay me. I, like, no, okay, hold on. This whole thing is broken. Hold on. Do you think that's what Hillary thought? Do they already have two kids and then she had twins on the way? Do you think she was just like, nah, I can probably get on Tinder and Chad's dick. Why would I stay with Steve? Like, do you really think it was easy for her to walk away from that relationship? The whole thing is broken. The, the, other, the other point, you know, so like Lauren uh, Southern responded to me saying, or she responded in general to many people. So what? Hillary gives up her job for Steven, but now that they're getting a divorce, she has no money. And I'm like, even if she kept her job, she would never have anywhere near as much money as Steven Crowder has. Like, so, so I, I, don't, I don't appreciate this argument that- That doesn't matter. Wait, what? Anywhere near as much money as Steven Crowder has. She kept her job. She would never have anywhere near as much money as Steven Crowder has. Yeah, but Steven Crowder wouldn't have been able to build his business if he didn't have somebody willing to watch the children and take care of the house at home. Like, so, so I, I, don't, I don't appreciate this argument that Crowder, as a wealthy man, pays her 25k a month. If Steven Crowder was worth- That 25k a month is a fantastic, like, it's fake. That fake, figure is fake. This just came out of nowhere. She got $25,000 basically sent to her from Crowder's business to pay for, like, divorce stuff. Which is, it's their money, of course. That's how divorce works. But this idea that she's getting, like, 25000 a month or some bullshit, that's just not true. That's, that he completely invented this fact, and he just runs with it. I don't know why. Nothing and had no job. We wouldn't be having this argument, so it's not an issue of whether she's entitled to as a woman and give up her job. It's an issue of Stephen has money, therefore they think he should pay. No. It's because they're married, and once you're married, whatever either of you are working on, you're both working on it because it's a, you're a team. You're now, like, financially, legally, whatever, like, unioned. Like, that's how it works. You're both acquiring whatever it is you're acquiring. Nobody's working alone here. You're only working because your significant other enables you to do so. So there's an interesting phenomenon here that for some reason has emerged in this particular case— where you're seeing a lot of these traditional conservatives actually come out as 
full on feminist as soon as it comes to the issue yeah. of divorce. I, I don't think it's feminist at all. If you want, but it literally if is. you want to incentivize traditional marriage, like you can't like put one party in a position where they get totally like ripped off in case of a divorce. You're correct. And like, the response the, is the to. Hmm. This is true. And Tim is about to give the smart response, which I'll agree with. You shouldn't be able to just leave the relationship and get f***ed over uh, if you're the guy and lose all the money. <clears throat> and the solution is husband and wife should just have separate bank accounts. And then the husband just pays the wife for upkeep and all the other work that she would otherwise be doing for free. Super easy. So if you're a guy and you run a business and if you want your wife to be able to divorce you but not take any of your assets, then you just pay her for fair work, for uh, cooking meals, watching kids 24-7, um, being an incubator for babies, um, cleaning the house. If you want to pay that wage or whatever you think that would be fair, you guys can negotiate what you think that wage should be, then fine, sure. Femin the divorce. feminist response is to say that all these women need to, like, st store away money in case of a divorce. No, it isn't. The, the the, like, in order to pay for it. Like the, 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 the traditional response to how you fix marriage is divorce is not allowed. Okay. Like, what is this statement? It's, like, unhinged. But there, uh, there's, there there's are... rare circumstances where, like, a guy is threatening to murder and beating his wife and his kids. Uh, and infidelity is one of these things. These, these are people who I don't think those accusations are on the table. They're, they're mostly just angry with each other and yelling at each other yeah. and they're not getting along. That's where a judge comes in and says, you are grown adults. You will behave appropriately. You have children. Those children need functioning parents. You will treat this relationship. You think parents that are fighting all the time like this are functioning? Ugh, this is so cringe. Relationship properly, get therapy. And at the very least, <sighs> if you don't like being around each other, you will be professional. And, and you chose this, this covenant. We now as a society, this is why it is absolutely a feminist position to say we should allow for divorce over irreconcilable yeah, differences. But, like, what, are you, what are you advocating for? For them to like live in the same house when they don't like each other? Like, yes. Uh, that's crazy. I, I, I think that the, then don't get married. Don't get married. This, this is what I'm saying. You don't have to get married. Nobody made them do it. They said, so, let's in, get married. And, in, then, they, and, then, your, and then 10 so years later, they're like, I'm having fun. I quit. So in your like theory of- That's, I like, that's like, that's it. Like, oh yeah, LOL. I'm having fun. I quit. Like, I just want to walk away because it's LOL, right? It's like such a retarded thing. It's like a childlike view of relationships and, and divorce. Let's get married. And, and, then, and, and, then, and then 10 so years later, they're like, I'm having fun. I quit. So in your like theory of like how this should work, like, so you should be able to theoretically using an example very like not related to this at all. Like, you know, let's say your media personality and you move out, buy a townhouse and then you cut your wife off financially. Like you should be able to do that. There should no. be no court redress. What for that. Wait, 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 that's what, happens, that's what happened in this case. So, no, no. As long as you don't get divorced, though. No, the judge will say, stop. You are married. STFU. You will both be in this house. You will raise your kids. You will stop fighting. And you will get therapy. If you don't want to get married, don't. Wasn't this guy supposed to be the libertarian guy? get married you, you just said that you don't trust judges in the way that they handle people with money versus no money and now you're like the totally judge needs argument. to assess whether or not you should live in the same house yes that's completely irrelevant to the point that i'm making I, okay so let's talk about if you don't want to get married you don't get married instead the, the the progressive feminist and liberal response has been let's weaken the institution of marriage and i'm like whoa, whoa, whoa leave marriage as it is people just don't have to get married like they people need to understand and i'm and, and part of me i'm kind of glad we're seeing all this because when you see the the shocking reality of divorce many people realize like uh oh there's a problem here maybe i shouldn't get married maybe you shouldn't it, if you get married and you swear an oath till death do us part, I do not believe you should be allowed to get divorced unless it, uh, it's at an extreme circumstance. Is he like Catholic now? I don't understand how he got so... Circumstances. Like traditionally what it used to be was infidelity, abuse, criminal activity, things like this. With the issue, with the Crowders, yes, I very much believe a family court judge should say, the problem here is two people who don't get along. Be adults, grow up, shut your mouths, do not fight in front of the kids. <laughs> this is wild, bro. That's it. Okay, so let me, because I mean... Like, that's like an ideal, like, perception of what should be. But, like, let's say we're, that meets your parameters for something that you can get divorced over, okay? And But you have a traditional... Like abuse and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, like, not this case, but, like, let's say a theoretical case. Life. Yeah, something like that. So, in that particular case, like, let's say the one of the people is the same situation. It makes all the income. The other person gave up their job 10 years ago. Like, should they be able to run up the cost? And, like, when the other person can't afford an attorney, be frozen out of the estate, even though that estate in Texas law it's, it's is... Not a, it's, not, it's, it's not a singular scenario. In the instance of, say, abuse, a woman shows up to the police covered in blood with teeth missing and then they go okay we're arresting oh, that guy's not working but it's like if you eventually file for a divorce in that kind of situation oh there's a woman here <laughs> strange she's been quiet the entire time like how should the attorneys be paid for in in, in a situation of like a woman is being mercilessly beaten yeah like a, an abuse situation that meets your criteria for divorce right i think i think in, perhaps then yes the the estate itself would be used to fund the proceedings for both sides like texas law says if if you have you know one person who can't pay or whatever or like you know i'm talking well, about during the, the, proceedings the, the, the family the family is, is a dual income like they, they file jointly they're married or whatever then it should be that the divorce lawyers are paid. Now, I think the issue there is you don't really have the same kind of divorce law when you have evidence of clear violations of fault in a, in a divorce. Now, that being said, infidelity is where things get do, things do get particularly troubling. And I know a lot of people then say, Tim, the problem here is women will fabricate or men will fabricate. They'll accuse each other of infidelity. And I'm like, yeah, bad people do bad things. How about you don't get married? Well, I, I think the, but the it's not like you know that before you get married, though, if the person's going to do bad things, right?
reason you got so much pushback is because like the practical reality is is that a lot of people on the right are pushing for a more traditional like stay at home like kind of marriage situation now i'm getting married but my fiance is gonna make pretty good money like she's currently working on her career and all that but and but like you know i i would expect if i got her to stay at home if like we were to get divorced that i wouldn't be able to drown her in legal costs and like you know half your states or whatever but texas but if you were poor well, if we were, if, first of all, if you're poor, if you were poor, yeah, if, yeah, same thing. If I didn't have the money to cover it, and, like we're married, yeah, from the from our from joint from estate. estate. Yeah. yeah, my problem is no fault divorce. It's uh, not. It's not that Crowder has to pay. It's that it's no fault divorce. Like getting divorced for we're fighting a lot. But I'm like, saying this is why you're getting pushback. It's like the misstatement of the 25k, which to be fair, that was put out intentionally, I believe, by Louder Crowder to make it seem like it's greedy Hillary. That was their narrative. And then it was the it's the idea that like yeah, the traditional housewife gets totally screwed under your scenario. But, but why is if it there unfair? is a divorce? Why is it unfair? Yes, true. Oh, no response to that. Good job, AJ. That is true. Marriage is like a protection for the woman, basically. Or the non-working spouse, I should say. Marriage is a protection for the spouse that's basically what? forgoing their entire career and their entire livelihood to invest in a relationship. In the event that that relationship fails, you don't want them to be completely and totally